In this video, we will look at how atoms and molecules can absorb light. This takes on two topics. The first one is, in general, how does light interact with molecules? We'll touch on vibrations and rotations and talk a little bit more about the circumstances under which light can break bonds to cause what's called a photochemical reaction. Then we'll turn back to vibrations and rotations, in particular looking at how IR light causes molecular vibrations and how microwave light causes molecular rotations. So if I take a molecule, and this is what I'm going to use to represent my molecule, I've got an atom, I've got an atom, and I've got a chemical bond in between them, and I expose it to light, something will happen. First off, if the light, when I say lower, I mean wavelength. If the light has a wavelength at the IR range or lower, so IR, just to give you an idea, is the light that your remote controls use to communicate with your television. If your light is IR or lower, infrared or lower, nothing much happens. Those molecules might vibrate, they might rotate, or they might do absolutely nothing. But if I use UV light or higher, and I apologize that my uh, little light wave has gone away here. So UV, that's a little higher than what you can see, ultraviolet light. That's the stuff that we're concerned about and we put on sunscreen to prevent uh, getting on us too much. You can break bonds using UV light. right? UV light, remember if we go back and we look at the uh, spectrum again really quickly, ultraviolet light lives right in this region of the spectrum. And we're getting pretty high, right? Here's energy right here. We're getting pretty high in energy. These photons have a bunch of energy. And they are so energetic. Those UV photons are so energetic that they can actually blow molecules apart. I had atom, atom, and chemical bond at the start, but I have atom and atom. That bond is gone. The UV light, the energy of the light, has busted it up. Right? So UV light, sufficient energy, is UV and up. You can break molecules. You can totally blow up the chemical bonds. You can rearrange chemical bonds, too. We won't spend too much time on that. And you can also make light or use light to make molecules react with other molecules. These are what we call photochemical reactions, right? Photo, if you think about photography, means light. And so a photochemical reaction is just a chemical reaction that requires light. These are the re uh, reactions that are responsible for the destruction of the ozone layer. They're also uh, often responsible for some types of cancer, skin cancers, melanomas, the mutations start because there was a light initiated chemical reaction that damaged your DNA. Uh, light related, related reactions are not all bad, right? Ozone's not so happy, melanoma's not so happy, but photosynthesis is a pretty nice reaction that keeps a lot of life on earth going as we know it. That's also light related. You need light to take that CO2 when the plant takes in the CO2 from the air it needs light to convert that into glucose and oxygen. Next, we're going to turn back to more about vibration and rotation. IR light, infrared light, causes molecules to vibrate. You can think of chemical bonds like springs. So you can think of having two atoms hooked together by a spring. It's like our friend the slinky dog. You've got an atom at one end, an atom at another end and a spring in between. Bonds do not always have to be the same length. They can change their length and they do it. Uh, they vibrate. The slinky goes back and forth with the input of energy. You can't make that slinky dog, you can't make the ends move closer and farther apart without input of energy from you. The bonds aren't going to move back and forth without input of energy from light, for example. And IR light can cause some types of molecules to vibrate. I've got three molecules here that are part of the greenhouse effect methane, CO2, and H2O. And we'll follow this little guy here. What happens is when you expose methane to IR light, or this is the methane molecule, methane is tetrahedral, and you can see that. This is, the what, this is what a tetrahedron looks like, right? We've got a carbon in the middle, we've got hydrogens on the outsides. And this is like the shaft and the legs on the music stand. Now, if I let it go back to vibrating, which I would like to do, you can see that the molecule is basically just going through vibrations. The bonds are not static, right? And there's different types of vibrations. There's a vibration where we're going in and out. 
there's a vibration I'm moving uh, top to bottom or from top and left to right there's a vibration where they're kind of waggling and there's other vibrations where the middle atom is moving as well those vibrations are happening in a methane molecule and they can get accelerated and helped by just the right kind of light one more uh, little bit of uh, effects of light that I'd like to look at is not a huge deal we said that IR light right IR is just below visible so we have UV and then visible and then IR is a little bit shorter or a little bit longer right so after IR you have microwave so microwave light is lower wavelength sorry higher wavelength and lower frequency and microwave light causes molecules to spin or rotate that's what your microwave oven does it uses microwaves to spin water molecules and when those water molecules spin they spit out heat again and that heat is what heats up your food and in fact that's why microwave ovens will dry off your food right because if it's spinning those water molecules around it's probably causing them to change states as well and so you're boiling off water and drying your food 